Good afternoon and welcome everybody to this International Pig Club featuring International Pig Club. Um, I'm Andrew Palmer, I'm a Knowledge Exchange Manager for HDB for the pork sector. Just a bit of housekeeping to start with, um, all attendees will be muted. Event timings um, are as we're, we're hoping to run for exactly an hour, so we're aiming to finish at two o'clock. This webinar will be recorded and made available after the event. And also, can I ask you to please complete, complete the survey at the end to help us improve our webinars in the future. Um, just for those who don't know the GoTo platform, if you look to the right hand side of your screen, you see a small orange arrow. Um, if that's one, either one's pointing in or pointing out, and that will show the control panel. Um, and then if you scroll down, you'll see the questions tab. And then just put any questions, um, please put into that tab, and we will um, look. We will look to read these out um, towards after Michelle's presentation. Any questions that may not get answered today um, due to time restrictions or any other problems, we will look to answering after the webinar is closed, firstly on an email. Um, and now to today's speaker, uh, Michelle Hugh, uh, Deputy Secretary General, Director of the International Communication and Cooperation Sector for the China Meat Association. Um, Michelle joined the China Meat Association in 2007 as a project man manager in the international communication and cooperation sector. In 2009, she was promoted to director of the sector and since then has led communication with embassies, international meat associations and enterprise to enhance the cooperation amongst industries and enterprises. Now Deputy Secretary General of the, of the CMA, Michelle continues to lead the international communication and cooperation sector and CMA importer and exporter branch as well, as well as pushing for effective and targeted communication and cooperation amongst their global um, partners. I will now, first of all, welcome Michelle to this webinar and thank you very much. And I will now hand over to Michelle. Hi, hello everyone. Um, good afternoon to all the uh, friends in the UK. Can you hear me? And this is Michelle from China Meat Association. And I'm very glad to be invited to join this webinar today and to share with you about the Chinese pig industry in China. And uh, today my presentation will uh, cover three parts. So the first, let me give you a quick introduction of China Meat Association. So China Meat Association was established in the year 1992 and was approved and registered in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. It is a nationwide professional and non-profit NGO that represents all meat in China, including pork, beef, sheep meat, poultry meat, and eggs. With 30 years of development, there are nearly 6,500 direct and indirect member companies across the country. Here, what we call the indirect members are those members of municipal and provincial associations in, uh, around China. And our member covers the whole meat industry chain including the fields of animal husbandry, slaughtering, meat processing, meat cold chain logistics, meat import and export, meat ingredients, machinery and equipment, packaging and et cetera. And CMA is now the vice presidential member and the executive council member of IMS, the International Meat Secretariat. And CMA also uh, set 13 branches, uh, which is also called uh, sub-branches um, by different meat species, because we have pork, beef and lime, poultry and eggs uh, uh, branches, and also some service sector branches. There are also six working committees um, what uh, I would like to emphasize, emphasize is that the standardization working committee 
So the responsibility of this working committee is to set the association standard and also called group standard. Uh, here in China, we have uh, national standard, industry standard, enterprises standard, and the group standard uh, in the mid sector. Uh, and the CMA is one of the authorized body of setting uh, industry uh, or uh, group standard and association standard here in the meat industry. And the uh, features of uh, this working committee is to um, fill in the leakage of the products, those who uh, do not have standards here uh, in the meat industry, and also for some specialty products. Uh, and the next, uh, I will mainly talk about the uh, uh, Chinese pork industry. First, uh, I'll give you uh, a, Michelle, an can I just come in. Yeah. I don't think the slides are moving on. If you put them on big, 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 big product, um, present of you, please. Okay, okay, just wait, just wait. So, okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, that's sorry. It. No worries. <laughs> Okay, so next I will mainly talk about the uh, uh, Chinese pork industry. First, I will give you an overview of sorry, uh, yes. Uh, first, I will give you an overview of the meat industry here in China. So China is a uh, major uh, meat producer. Oh, sorry, major meat producer, consumer, and importer. In terms of uh, meat production, China's total meat production was remained the world's largest for more than 30 years since the early 1990s. The production of pork and sheep meat has been ranking the first in the world for many years. The production of poultry meat exceeded that of the United States in the past two years and became the first in the world. Beef production uh, in the last uh, two years, uh, sorry, beef, pr beef production in the last two years exceeded that of the EU, leaped to the worst third just next to the United States and Brazil. Specifically, uh, specifically, the production of pork, beef, sheep meat, and poultry meat in China in the year 2022 reached 92.27 million tons, an increase of 3.39 million tons. That is 3.8% over the previous year. The pork production was 55.41 million tons, accounting for 60% of the total production of pork, beef, sheep meat, and poultry meat. Beef production, um, beef production was 7.18 million tons, accounting for 7.8%. Sheep meat production was 5.25 million tons, accounting for 5.7%. And poultry meat production was 24.43 million tons, accounting for 26.5%. In addition, China produces nearly 2 million tons of rabbit, donkey, and other livestock and poultry meat every year. From the, meat, uh, from the meat import, China's meat import demand is very strong. In the year 2020, influenced by the reduction of domestic pork production, meat imports approached to 10 million tons. In the year 2021 and 2022, domestic pork production recovered, and the production of beef, sheep meat, and poultry meat also increased. The meat imports decreased, but China still maintained its position as world's largest meat importing country. Specifically, uh, in the year 2022, China imported 7.4 million tons of meat, of which 2.8 million tons were pork and the pig bed products, accounting for 38% of the total. Beef imports was 2.69 million tons, accounting for 36%. Poultry meat products reached 1.32 million tons, accounting for 18%. Sheep meat imports was 306,000 tons, accounting for 5%. Uh, let's look at the meat consumption. China's meat uh, consumption in the year uh, 2022 was estimated to be close to 100 million tons based on domestic meat production and net meat import volume in uh, 2022. 
And uh, let's look at the main characteristics of pork production uh, in China. Uh, the first point is that the meat production in China is dominated by pork. China has a long history of pig breeding and pig consumption. For a long time, meat production in China has been dominated by pork production. Pork production once accounted for more than 90% of the total production. In recent years, the proportion of beef, sheep meat, and poultry meat production has been rising. But pork production still accounts for more than half of the total meat production. In the year 2022, China produced 92.27 million tons of pork, beef, sheep meat, and poultry meat, of which 55.41 million tons were pork, accounting for 60%. Pork production will be dominant in meat production for a long time due to the resource, uh, resource conditions of livestock and poultry breeding and meat consumption habits in China. And second point is that the production capacity can basically meet domestic pork consumption demand. Um, the pig breeding industry in China has a good foundation and a large production capacity, which can basically meet domestic pork consumption demand. China has over 14 million breeding souls and over 450 million live pigs in stock. About seven per, uh, 700 million pigs are slaughtered annually. And the annual production of pork is about 55 million tons, basically meeting the domestic demand for pork consumption. According to the, the development plan of China's animal husbandry and uh, veterinary industry, the self-sufficiency rate of pork should be kept at uh, about uh, uh, 95%. Uh, and the third point is the number of pig farms or households is large and the scale is small. In the year 2022, there were about 20 million pig farms or households in China and the 700 million pigs were slaughtered with an average of 35 pigs per household. Among them, more than 19.5 million pig farmers were with annual slaughter of less than 100 pigs accounting for more than 95% of the total number of pig farmers. There are less uh, than 200,000 pig farms with an annual slaughter of more than 500 pigs, accounting for less than 1%. Less than 5,000 pig farms were with annual slaughter of more than 10,000 pigs. And the first is that the rate of the concentrated pig farming has been rising rapidly what is note uh, what what is noteworthy is that the large and the medium sized farm have developed rapidly in recent years and the rate of concentrated pig farming has been rising and here uh, the rate of concentrated pig farming refers to the proportion of the number of pigs slaughtered by the farms with annual slaughter of more than 500 heads in total domestic pig slaughter. From the year uh, 2011 to 2021, the rate of concentrated pig farming increased by 25% from 37% to 62%. In 2022, there were more than 30 pig farming enterprises in China with the sale volume of more than 1 million heads of pigs, totaling about 180 million heads, accounting for more than a quarter of the total number of slaughtered pigs in the country. Among them, Mu Yuan Company, the top one pig farming enterprise in China here, sold about 61.2 million heads of pigs accounting for nearly 9%. Uh, and the next point is implement appointed abattoir slaughtering appeared over capacity. Here in China, we, we uh, implement appointed abattoir slaughtering for pig slaughter and continuously strengthens the supervision. The number of slaughtering enterprises shows a downward trend but the total number is still large and the slaughtering over capacity is serious. In the year 2022, there were about 5,600 
designated pig slaughterhouses with an annual slaughter capacity of about 1.1 billion heads and only accounting um, for nearly 30% of capital utilization. And the last point is that because of the animal epidemics, such as African swine fever, has already brought some uncertainties to pig farming and the pork production in China. And next, I will talk about the main characteristics of pork consumption here in China. And the first point is that the indoor consumption as the main and outdoor consumption developed rapidly here. The meat consumption in China, uh, sorry, uh, the, the meat consumption here in China can be divided into two categories, which I already mentioned, the indoor consumption and the uh, outdoor consumption. And uh, the meat used as cooking materials at home, we call it indoor consumption. And outdoor consumption uh, refers to cooking materials in catering industry, with indoor consumption as the main and outdoor consumption as the supplement here in China. Uh, in, in terms of the consumption trend, the proportion of indoor consumption shows a downward trend, while the proportion of outdoor consumption shows an upward trend. And second point is that pork occupies a dominant position in meat consumption. In total meat consumption, pork consumption accounts for about 60%. And the third is that the Chinese citizens consume nearly uh, 60 million tons of pork annually. The average annual pork consumption of Chinese consumers is about 40 kilo, uh, kilograms which is a leading position in the world and far higher than the global average, which is about 15 kilograms. And the fourth is that uh, the pork consumption is dominated by fresh meat and supplemented by frozen meat. We Chinese people like to eat fresh meat. When families buy meat, especially for pork, they prefer fresh meat rather than frozen meat. Frozen pork both domestic and imported, is mainly used as a raw material for horeca and the meat processing. Fresh pork accounts for more than 80% of total pork consumption, while frozen pork is less than 20%. And um, the fifth uh, point is that pork consumption is mainly on naked raw, raw meat. Most of the pork sold in the market is not packaged or branded, and the packaged and the branded pork is less, is less seen in the market. And the sixth point is that um, the pork consumption is dominated by primary products supplemented by processed products. Only about 10% of pork is processed for pork products every year. And the seventh point is that the pig byproducts are popular with high consumption. Uh, with high uh, consumption, uh, domestic products couldn't see the demand. Uh, could, couldn't meet demand with an annual gap of around one million tons. Uh, so that is to say, there are uh, uh, great potential for the imported byproducts. And the last point is that the pork consumption began to appear the trend of upgrading. The consumption of packaged meat, branded meat, specialty meat, processed pork products have been rising, which will be the new development uh, direction. And next, uh, I will talk about the main characteristics of China's pork and uh, pig byproducts. And the first point is that pork import volume is mainly affected by domestic pork production. Pork consumption has a certain rigid, rigidity when the, uh, that is uh, the necessary food that we buy here in China. When, the, uh, when domestic pork production is reduced, pork import volume increased rapidly. After the uh, reception of domestic pork production, pork imports fell quickly. From the year uh, 2018 to 2022, influenced by the changes in domestic pork production, pork imports fluctuated greatly. The import volumes uh, are 1.19 million tons, 2.11 million tons, uh, 4.39 million tons, 
3.71 million tons and 1.76 million tons respectively. The import volume of pig by products is relatively stable. In recent years, the domestic demand for imported pig by products fluctuated around 1 million tons. And European and American countries are the main sources of pork and uh, pig byproducts imports to China. In the year 2022, China imported 1.76 million tons of pork from 18 countries, among which Spain, Brazil, and Denmark were the top three source countries, accounting for more than 60 of total China's pork imports. The United States, the Netherlands, and Canada were also important source of pork imports to China. In the year 2022, China imported more than uh, 100,000 tons of pork from those three countries. In 2022, China imported 1.04 million tons of pig byproducts from 16 countries. The United States, Spain, Denmark, and the Netherlands, France were the top five South countries accounting for nearly 80% of the total. Now let's look at the uh, uh, main characteristics of China's, uh, okay, uh, the, the British pork and the pig byproducts uh, of, from UK. And uh, I think uh, the price have certain uh, advantages from the UK. Um, the price advantages of British pork is strong. In the year 2022, the average price of imported pork to China was about 2,200 US dollars. Okay, was less than 2,000 US dollars per town. In the year 2022, China's total uh, pork imports filed 53% year on year, but the imports from the UK showed a relatively small decline. Um, that is to say, uh, last year, China imported 75,000 tons of pork from the UK, decreased 27% year on year, accounting for 4.2% of the total pork imports and ranking the eighth. The UK also has a strong price advantage in pig byproducts. Uh, last year, the average price of imported pig byproducts to China was about 2,500 US dollars per, uh, per town. And the average price of imported pig byproducts from the UK was about 2,100 US dollars per town. Last year, China's total imports of pig byproducts decreased by 15% year on year, while imports from the UK backed the, backed the trend. Specifically, in the year 2022, China imported 53,000 tons of pig byproducts from the UK, a year on year increase of 10%, accounting for 5% of the total imports of pig byproducts, ranking the six. And uh, here in China, we also make some industry trainings uh, to accumulate the personnel in the meat industry. And at present, the meat industry training uh, we are doing now uh, can be classified in the following six types. So the first is the national vocational and the technical schools. Um, they, uh, and the, some, some secondary schools or technical schools provide customized personnel training and output for meat companies. And second is uh, the national colleges and the universities. Uh, they offer specialties or majors such as veterinary uh, medicine, food engineering, quality inspection, marketing management uh, to provide undergraduate education. And the third party also uh, provides some training uh, programs, um, such as uh, uh, vocational and occupational courses, according to the National Occup uh, Occupational Classification Code. And uh, uh, our governmental departments also provide vocational skills re-education in special and important fields, such as food safety, 
and uh, veterinary health a uh, health inspection and the uh, industry associations or organizations such as the Chad Meat Association we also provide vocational skill uh, evaluation and the training for middle or senior technical personnel and the management personnel of enterprises uh, we China Meat Association established the industry management evaluation system with the purpose to train a group of technicians uh, such as junior, uh, intermediate, and the senior um, technicians in China's meat industry through trainings, examination, and evaluation for different occupations and positions. And the last is uh, the enterprise themselves. Uh, some companies also offer a relevant staff training according to their own needs. And that's all for my presentation today. And if there are any questions and further information, and you can contact me by email. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michelle. As ever, a uh, brilliant presentation and some fascinating, massive numbers in there that we can only comprehend on, you know, considering the scale of the um, the UK operation as well, sort of thing. So. Um, I'm just going to go. Um, I've just got a few questions uh, to get going. Um, in the aftermath of COVID and African swine fever, uh, does China see any major changes in its approach in its approach to home production and importation? Okay. Just wait. And yes, we can see uh, there are really uh, great changes because, because of the outbreak uh, of uh, ASF here in China in the year 2018, the pork production in China dropped significantly and the pork imports so, uh, soared in the, year 19, uh, in the year 2019 and the year 2020. Uh, since the year 2021, China's meat production gradually recovered and the pork production increased, while pork imports decreased. Um, but after uh, experiencing the African swan fever for more than three years, pig farming enterprises have improved their awareness of biosecurity and adopt more and more technical means to prevent and uh, control the animal disease and the scale of intensive farming has expanded as well. And according to the experience in the prevention and control of uh, ASF, and uh, I think there won't be a large scale or widespread outbreak of ASF anymore. So due to the increase of uh, the proportion of intensive farming, the total number of uh, lab pigs in stock is basically stable. Domestic pig production capacity has fully recovered already and back to normal. So meat imports will be relatively stable and uh, pig byproducts may increase a little bit and the import demand is reasonable. So uh, it is estimated that the demand for branded meat and the specialty high quality meat is likely to increase. So that's all for my answer. Okay. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions from the chat. Um, what is the average pig dead weight at slaughter in China? Because we have different countries have different slaughter weights. What's what sort of the average weight in China? Do you have that number to hand? Sorry, beg your pardon. Uh, what is the average slaughter weight of a pig in China? Do you know that one? Uh, you mean the weight of slaughtering? The weight. The weight, how heavy it is. The weight, the weight. Oh, okay, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I don't know uh, exact uh, figure of this. So, all right. I may, I may write it down, and uh, I will ask my colleague and give okay. you the answer by email. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Um, You're welcome. Um, you mentioned a little bit about eradication of ASF. Um, can you are you able to expand that a little bit? Are you doing it within regions, you know, regard to controlling ASF in the regions sort of thing? Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, uh, the Fr uh, France has already sent some kind of protocol um, for their something like a con compartment compartment 
sorry, what is called? So it's just like uh, by zoning or compartmentalization. Yeah. 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 So France yeah. already made some protocols with Mora here in China. Um, but here in China, we we are going to uh, classified and uh, by district or by zoning in different uh, provinces. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Thank you. So yeah. Uh, so there is there are already some measures has been taken here in China. Yeah. But if you okay. you would like to know more details, and I think I will uh, send you email about about it in in details. Lovely. Thank you. Um, a quick one with you you showed the the changing face of the size of the units in china in regards to the some bigger ones start and we see all the um, press photographs of these big mega pig production um sites now that's starting to appear what's the public perception of these big uh, pig production units compared to the traditional backyard farms um this way Uh, okay, so um, from the government uh, uh, level, uh, our uh, China, Chinese government uh, encouraged a large farming enterprises to develop concentrated pig farming. At present, the concentrated farming accounts for more than 60 in China, as I mentioned in my presentation. And from the perspective of uh, industry association, we also encourage small and medium-sized farming enterprise to establish the mode of farming cooperatives and to improve the construction of industrial chain, the large-scale farming enterprises have to extend their business scope to slaughtering. Um, just set an example, uh, Mu Yuan Company, the largest pig farming uh, company here in, Ch in China, and they are building slaughterhouses by themselves. And we encourage the capital, we also encourage the capital uh, cooperation between farming enterprises and the slaughtering uh, and uh, processing enterprises to become uh, shareholders with each other. From a simple buying and a selling relationship to a, a marriage uh, relationship of the capital cooperation. So through this way, the production and the price will be stable to some extent. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, what you know, we, it's very well documented, certainly in the UK and and around the world as well. And we heard about it a little bit in Brazil a couple of um, com, um, webinars ago. What's the uh, availability of staff to work on pig farms in China? Is it good? Is it um, short? Or what? What's the what, what's the what's the ground like on China regards to staff and working on farms? Um, yes, there, there's also shortages of uh, staff in Chinese farm and, plant, and plants. So we are uh, now trying to train uh, people to reserve talent personnel for the industry. Uh, just like uh, uh, I mentioned in my presentation, uh, we, uh, also, uh, we also make some uh, industry trainings and to save the, uh, the personnel for the industry. Okay, lovely. Um, and some new, new questions coming in. Do you, do, are, are there any farm assurance schemes in China? You know, in this country, we have um, Red Tractor and we have um, um, Freedom Fruit Stroke uh, um, assurance schemes for different levels of quality of production. Is there anything like that in China? Uh, yes, the MORA, I mean, uh, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and the Rural Affairs are now uh, trying to um, draft, drafting such kind of uh, uh, quality assurance scheme here in China. Uh, just like you mentioned, the, the red track, which is very impressive to us. And uh, we are also would like to learn from the uh, experience of uh, uh, other uh, foreign countries. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's the general, um, we see China's um, sort of lead to field a little bit regards to importation of raw feed ingredients. What's the main five ingredients for, uh, in, in the pig rations, you know, in the pig industry? Uh, so, so sorry, I beg your pardon, what, what is your question? Uh, what's the main, five main feed ingredients in the pig diet in China? 
is it corn, soya, um, all them sort of things like we generally have in this country and around the world? I think it's a corn and soya. Uh, we import corn. a lot, you know. Yeah, we, we produce a lot in China and also we import a lot from other countries like from the United States and from Brazil. So, uh, mm, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Holly, for stepping yeah, in. There. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> thank you, Holly, for helping me to answer the question. <laughs> um, does China see itself being a major exporter in the future as a pork? Or are you just going to, you've got a very large home market there to um, feed? Will there be any spare that you'll export at all, do you think? Mm, uh, so, uh, so from the current situation, um, the export of pork will not be uh, the main target for China. Uh, though we just recovered our peak capacity right now, uh, it's mainly for domestic consumption. Um, what might be the interest in the future is that to strive for the export share of prepared or we call the pre-made meals and the products, which is now very popular here in China. So the prepared meat may uh, meet the consumption demand of Chinese food. So uh, we, we, we are not going to be the, the, the export uh, of pork country. Uh, yeah, I just want to add one thing. You know, China's target is still self-sufficiency at the moment. So yeah. we don't have extra volume to export to any other countries, but we do supply some to Hong Kong because Hong Kong is part of China, you know? So that's the answer to that. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Holly, again. Um, uh, a, a, a new question. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that a lot of, there's a, a little bit of a growing market in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, pork, um, pork that's packaged in packets and things like that rather than being fresh or wet meat is that mm -hmm. what's that in correlation to do is it is with the change in population dynamics is that is that a fair fair assumption you would think uh, so the trend uh, to be uh, buying uh, packaged meat is uh, mainly because of uh, uh, the disease or the COVID-19 situation so people are um, uh, more and more aware of uh, uh, food safety and uh, uh, they need a high quality uh, products so they prefer to buy packaged meat uh, rather than uh, naked meat. Okay, thank you. Um, when during ASF and um, the outbreak certainly it was well documented in China how it decimated your herd, um, was the uh, switch to um, other proteins you know other meats you know chicken beef or lamb you know or as people stayed um loyal to the pork product because we saw some very impressive um, consumption figures sort of thing mm, uh, well um uh, the asf will not affect the consumption of pork in china i think um asf is not uh, uh, we call it a zoonotic disease i like the bird flu which has a pandemic mentally, but pork will not affect the consumption pan, uh, panic and will not affect the confidence of pork consumption. Um, I think the only reason that might switch meat buying to other uh, proteins is that the outbreak of ASF uh, has reduced the supply of pork, which results in a rise in the price. And the rise in the price of pork is likely to drag down consumption and consumer mainly depends on the consumption cost. So I think uh, uh, only because of the price is rising, so people may uh, choose other uh, animal proteins. Okay, thank you. Uh, a question that's come in. Is the, is the a target or uh, an expectation what the Chinese government or Chinese husbandry association um, to bring UK-based genetics technology and expertise to China, because it's been well documented that you know the Britain leads sort of the way a little bit in genetics. Is that a, a, a relationship that's going to continue? Do you think? Uh, so, I mean, import of genetic from UK. Yeah. 
Uh, I think uh, uh, in previous years, we already uh, import some genetics from UK. Uh, if, uh, if, um, if I didn't uh, uh, fail my memory. So I think uh, this is also a good way to cooperate with UK. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. One question that I sort of wrote down uh, prior to our conversation when we set this uh, webinar up: Where you know, it's, where's where's technology going to come into? You know, is China leading its way in terms of technology, especially maybe in the processing plants? Um, and do, do you see automation being more on the pig on the pig production side as well? Mm, uh, you mean the new technology in yes. uh, yeah. pig farming? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I think many uh, enterprises here are raising pigs in experimental buildings. Uh, there, there is a very interesting thing, and the large enterprises such as Muyuan and uh, Zhengbao uh, in China are trying to do so. You know, they raise pigs in buildings, and this is an innovation and a solution for countries with limited agricultural land, and but it's still in the experimental stage. And the specific results remains to be observed later. Okay, thank you. Um, there are a couple, well, there's a couple of questions that came through that we're going to take offline. Um, is there any more questions for Michelle um, before I wrap up this webinar? Um, can't see any more come through. Uh, Tony, can you see any more? I think I've read them all the ones we need to read out. No, there's no more, no more outstanding AP. No, no, there's a couple we're going to take offline uh, with it being a recorded um, webinar. Um, Jonathan, um, head of our exports, do you want to come in or anything, say anything? Um, yeah, just just to, um, well, firstly, thank Michelle from my point of view. <clears throat> the international meat business uh, is all about relationships, and it's a really important relationship AHDB has with the China Meat Association. And as we said just before this started, I'm really excited to be going back out to China for the first time in three and a half years. And in two weeks' time, I'll be able to see Michelle face to face. It's a really important market for the UK sector. Obviously, you know, we're not the biggest exporter in the world, but £202 million pounds worth of pork and pork offal was destined to China from the UK last year. And although the, the, the pork uh, has become under pressure a little bit, our fifth quarter shipment stood up really well and increased by 6%. So it remains a critically important market to us. Um, just a couple of things there. I think the carcass weight is pretty heavy in China, but we'll get we'll look that up and then get that back out to you because um, the data I've got, I'm just not quite sure where that's at. And just just to add a point on genetics, really, from AHDB's point of view, look, we don't have a resource in our little export team to support genetics export. But what we do is then we work with a consortium from the industry including the British Pig Association and a few people where we do support some genetics export work. The UK was president of Asia, which is the biggest livestock show in Asia two weeks ago in Thailand. I know that's not China, but the region is important. And I think genetics, as Michelle said, is a really good, we have a good reputation and it underpins our pork exports if we can talk about that reputation. And yes, pork genetics have gone to China. So I just wanted to just reiterate how important that market is for us. And, and just give a personal thanks to Michelle. And although her camera won't be on, just also introduce you to Holly Chen, who was on the, on the, on the call there, who helped out with a couple of questions. Holly, just for those guys on the webinar, Holly works 100% time through the China and Britain Business Council on AHDB activity. And of course, our export activity in China is, is, is wholly led by pork. Pork is, you know, as the, the data that Michelle eloquently shared, is you know the consumption is is huge in China, and you know and it's a big part of imports. 2.8 million tons of pork imported, I think Michelle said last year, is a significant volume. And although we're not the biggest, it's still really important to us. And I very much look forward to seeing everybody in Qingdao in two weeks' time. So just thanks for that opportunity, Andrew. Lovely. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and can I just finally wrap up again, saying firstly thank you to Michelle. Um, we eventually got there in the end with um, British summertime messing up our um, pre plan last year's, uh, last week, should I say. And again, for Holly in the background. Um, also behind the scenes is Gemma, who are our HDB events team, um, which has been helping put together and um, driving us around the technology this afternoon. 
Um, Tony, my colleague, who's just um, stick, waits in the wings in case we had uh, any Wi-Fi failures on my behalf. And um, and again, thank you to you guys for all listening in as well. Um, we we really do enjoy these um, uh, webinars uh, around the world, and it will just bring me nicely on to our next one. Um, our next planned webinar, it will be hearing from Spain, um, and that will be on the 26th of June. Um, and we'll, the, the meeting links and meeting joining details will be going out in the, in the next few weeks. So I'll bid everyone a good afternoon or good evening in um, Holly's and Michelle's terms. It's eight o'clock in the evening there or nearly quarter to nine there now. Thank you again. Um, enjoy your afternoon and um, we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. And thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Holly, for organizing such kind of good webinar today. So forgive me because I'm not that so professional in answering <laughs> those questions and the presentation just because of um, the fewer ones in our association who can make presentation in English. <laughs> so right. if there's any uh, question beyond my knowledge, please just send the email to AHDB and also to Holy, and I will ask my colleagues who can answer your questions and uh, uh, give you uh, answers by emails. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.